Fix our microphone. Yes. Oh, I can't get her. Yes. Fix our microphone. Yeah, we have a 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 microphone. Yeah, we are going to begin the finance meeting. It is uh, 601, we do have a quorum, and I would ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Council Member Gully will lead us in the pledge. The pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I like that. Do a roll call, Council Member Gully. Here. <laughs> Council Member Garrett's uh, absent. Council Member Peritor is on her way. Um, absent. Council Member Cummings. I'm here. Wonderful. Council Member Bissember. Present. Council Member Kennedy. Absent. Council President Mantello here. We're going to go right into the public forum. Would anyone like to come up and speak on any item on this evening's agenda? Um, if so, just please state your name, your address, saying you have five minutes. Hi. Hi. You can pull it right out. Actually, yeah. turn it on in the back. Also. Oh, yeah. Hi, Andy. On the bottom. Oh. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hi, my name is John Johansson. Address is 152 Mill Street in Troy, New York. Um, I'm speaking about the ampersand topic. Um, I've actually been personally working on the Narrows Trail for quite a while. I'm also a neighbor of it and am extremely supportive of the settlement with ampersand. Um, if you look at the map, um, the ampersand property that um, uh, is, is, is subject to the um, settlement there actually is a critical like keystone piece that would be like a, an extremely large boon to the open space plan of Troy. It basically connects the uh, Gorge Park to Prospect Park, which has been something that's literally been on Troy's radar since like the late 1800s and like City Beautiful plans and so forth. So um, from my standpoint, um, I, I highly support the uh, settlement and um, yeah, don't know what else to say. <laughs> Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. 
And I take it, okay, you were speaking, bear with me. I see it. Yep, 101. Yep, 101. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on any item on the agenda? Hi. I'm Ben Stein, uh, 64 Thompson Street in Troy. Uh, and I also really support the Narrows project. And uh, I think it's really important that, that, that this goes through because it's without that, there's not a lot of alternatives. Uh, and I'm the neighbor right up there also. I'm right around Burton Pond. And I think it's a really, just in the project in general, I think it's a really important sort of thing for Troy, especially for South Troy, for people to be able to access downtown in, a, in an alternative way. And uh, just have you know more exposure to nature. It's such a sort of unique thing to be able to, uh, you know, be walking from South Troy all the way to downtown in around an hour. It's such a cool project. And I think this going through is really a critical sort of point to making that happen. But, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Would anyone else like to scan any item on the agenda? Hi there. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, so my name is my name is Mike Yeomans, and I'm a recent homeowner in South Troy at 25 St. Vincent Ave. And part of uh, the agenda tonight is to designate some land that's near 25 St. Vincent <coughs> as surplus to be sold by the city. And I recently bought the property in hopes of building an urban farm on it. And those plans have begun already, building a fence and have several 25 foot beds dug already. And I'd like to continue that. Um, so I don't really plan on making a development, just kind of taking advantage of the land that's right next to the house. And you know, you have opportunity to collect taxes for me as well. So I think it would just be, uh, you know, going towards making South Troy even greener than it is already. And to have your vote. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak? How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, it's gonna be a little weird. I'm not actually a resident, um, but I've been doing quite a bit of work with the crew on the Narrows project. So I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I'm here, okay. here to show my support for the Amber mm -hmm. Sand. Um, you know, I think that's gonna be a tremendous asset to the city if we can complete that section of the, the trail. Uh, we've completed a large, amount of work on the Mill Street and the Burden Park area, as it is now, the Burden Pond. And uh, it's just, it's going to be a jewel for the city if it's done in the, that section would be a tremendous asset. Awesome. Thank you, Council very President, much. can yeah. we just get your name for the record? I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, John Haywood. I know you introduced yourself, but yeah, yeah John, thank you. Your address also, please. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, actually, I live in Gilderland at 32 okay. Woodlake Avenue, or Perfect. Woodlake Road. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for the help with the trail. Thank you. Would yeah. anyone else? Hi one there. Last, one last one. Let me sneak in here. Not a problem. Take um, your time. I'm uh, Carl Magnus, 88 Lexington Avenue, Troy, New York. I'm with the Narrows Project and Burden Pond. I'm kind of like the impromptu caretaker at this point. Uh, I run the Facebook page for everything. Um, I'm with for the ampersand, going with that property. We need this connection, but also Mount Ida Preservation Association, which I'm a part of. Is a board member at this point. Um, it would help bridge that gap, especially with the project going up through Spring Avenue and coming down through Prospect Park, and then eventually revitalizing the Postco Gorge Park, which, like we're doing right now, Burn and Pond, to help the volunteers, all this is. So, mm -hmm. push, push it for the summer would be awesome for the project, especially with the city of Detroit. So, yep. I might be the only lifelong resident of <laughs> the project. So, yeah. So I see this go through again. So, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on any item on the agenda? All right. We're going to close the public forum section. Local laws none. Ordinance 96. Ordinance transferring funds within the 2019 general fund budget. Council President Mantello at the request of the administration. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Council Member December, do I have the second? Second. Second. Council Member Gully. Discussion? Yes. Council Member Cummings. 
uh, so the shift from training to travel, is that travel for training? Just a reclassification? I believe so. Okay. And then the insurance increase? We're going to get cybersecurity okay. insurance. We've never had it. Good looking out. Andy, I'm very uh, shocked that we've never had that. So are we. Yeah. <laughs> you get a little malware and then you know you get a big deal. Yeah. And then this uh, elevator, is that in the pit that garage or somewhere else? I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> we need one in the pit that garage. No, no, it's for it. Yeah. It's for one of the larger parking that's what I'll say to me. I would think so I don't know. Okay anyway that would be great. <laughs> you could follow up on that one Andy that'd be great. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right ordinance 96 carries uh, four zero and for the record I will state that council member Kennedy is here. He okay. did not vote yet, so um, yeah, so for Sarah. Ordinance 97, Council Member Kennedy is present. Ordinance amending the Capital Projects Fund budget, Council President Mantello at the request of the administration. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion, Council Member Kennedy, do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Gully, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance 97 carries 5-0. Ordinance 98, ordinance amending the capital projects fund budget, Council President Vantello, at the request of the administration. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Council Member Gully, do I have a second? I'll second the motion. Second. Council Member Kennedy, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance 98 carries 5-0. Ordinance 99, ordinance declaring certain city-owned property as surplus and directing the comptroller to dispose of said property. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion, Council Member Kennedy. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Gully. Discussion? Um, yeah, I, I would just uh, ask Sharon um, if you could talk about this. And, um, I, you know, while you're talking about it, I guess my overall question is um, how and when do we declare surplus property? For instance, you know, like when does the city say, okay, we're going to declare this sur surplus property? Is it when a property owner or someone's interested? Um, because I do know a couple of people we had talked about across from Spring, and there was there is interest, and you had stated we're holding it. So, how is it decided to declare it surplus? And maybe you could then then talk about this. Thank you. Okay. So in this case, Michael came to us because he actually in the beginning thought he bought it when he bought the two parcels of land. Um, so he had asked if we would sell this to him. So then there's a process where we contact somebody from the water department to see, you know, if it's okay to sell it. So we did that. They showed us where the water lines or the sewer lines were. And then we contact engineering in case there's anything as well. Um, if those two say it's okay, then we bring it to the council to declare it surplus. So water and who's the second? Engineering. Engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... So basically, so that spring half, it, it would be decided by water and engineering if... Spring half is different because that one, according to Steve, is going to be used for part of the urban trail. So they would need to determine how much of it that they need. Like, but again, it would have to go to water and engineering as well. Yeah, okay. Council President. Council Member. I would, I would consider uh, spring half open space, and I, yeah. I believe as a city we're trying to preserve open space. Yeah. Uh, um, that's what I'm asking. And, you know, the question is um, deciding open space slash, you know, does the city look at the property and say, okay, part of this, we want to retain for a trail, obviously, because, you know, we want that connection and the rest of it surplus. Like, how is that determined? 
that we'd have to go back to planning and see okay. what their plan, you okay. know, what their plan is for that. Okay. So in this case, right? Can we get? Oh, I'm I'm still a little confused right. about which I'm, which portion of this we're. That's why I made a big map so that you could see it because it's yeah. very hard on there. You can, you can come up, okay. Sharon. I mean, this is informal. So, so he wants to purchase. I'm sorry, I'm not sure you know. He, wants, he wants to purchase everything. Oh, okay. okay. Say that again. The parcels are essentially an island. What he, what the property owner currently owns. Right. He owns this one and this one. Okay. Okay. So what we're asking to declare surplus is all of this plus this piece because if we don't declare this surplus, it's going to be um, landlocked. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's he's not interested in buying this piece, but the guy that lives down here may. Okay. So we're asking that all of this be declared surplus. And then go out to bid as Correct. the normal process. It's going to be two parcels, right? He said he doesn't want these. Right. He said he needs first card. Correct. Right. Yep. So the pink portion will be separate, obviously, from the blue. Correct. Now, on, on the survey here, it sort of looks like there's a structure on the canal out section. Is that true, or is that just because there's a hill there and it's confusing? On this section? Yeah. No, it is. Okay. Um, right below. Yeah, and I mean, it's certainly like, I don't know if you, yeah. like, and there's, there, there's definitely a house in the picture there. I don't know how much be, it might just be a misalignment of the, of the map. I know this is a hill, so that could confuse the topography. Um, okay, well, we're just talking about those two sections. Okay. And Sharon, I take it the property, um, there's no trail connection, there's no use. You know, for so our, I'll, I'll speak to that briefly. Yeah. Um, so the this property that was sold last two years ago now um, is here ish. I don't know. It's a uh, just up canal from this, and so there was some potential for the trail uh, to instead of going through that well property to come down St. Vincent. Um, my sense is that if it were to do that, it would just come down St. Vincent itself. And wouldn't need to be zigzagging across zigzagging. this property. So, yeah. so it'd be fine for you know, I guess, in other easements for a sidewalk or um, how would that work in theory? If there was a, a trail like right next to the road there, how close are we getting to the road right. with, this, with this divide? What Chris said from um, water yes. was that the water line. I think I wrote that also. The water line is is close, so we'd want when when the potential purchaser does the survey, we want so many feet from the sidewalk retained in our ownership. God, yeah, it looks like there's a water line down the side of St. Vincent. Correct. So we would retain Correct. that. Correct. Which would be plenty of space for that trail. Correct. To go down the side of St. Vincent. If that, I mean, that's all very speculative. That if there were that even to happen, there's a property right above that that's, I think, under foreclosure in 2020. Um, it's holding That's how this right house now. was. The one he bought was in foreclosure, and then we foreclosed on the other piece. It's been a mess. So, but at any rate, <laughs> I, I think if this trail were to go through here, it would be fine to be on St. Vincent itself and, and would, wouldn't need to go across this property for any reason. Good. Chair President? Yeah, Council Member Kennedy and then Council Member Gully. Would the purchaser? I guess if he does purchase the two adjacent parcels, be required, or I guess it would just be one adjacent parcel, be required to combine the parcels, or mm -hmm. would it be like a subdivision opportunity for him? It'd be interesting. Hopefully, he will merge them together. It's in his best interest, tax-wise. All right, Chair. Council Member Gali. The gentleman that is looking at this property as a buildable piece for the garden. We're going to put that up to bid. If somebody else were to bid on that property and say, uh, I want to build a home or a structure on that property, can that be done there? Uh, Large enough, right? Half an acre? It's yeah, a slope. It's one for one. Um, I mean, what, I'm just wondering probably, what we're going to run into if he's not the only bid and we have granted right. options. Right. What, what, could what, happen. That could happen. All right. So we might as well address it. So bid properly. Council President. Yeah. <laughs> parcel the parcel is a steep slope, so yeah. it might be declared. So it's not the uh, 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 most of it I don't believe is. 
Okay. Good. Sharon, okay. anything else we're missing? No. Nope. Okay. Um, like Jim said, it's got it still has to go through the process. Oh, right. 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 Now learning it through. When is uh, the next round? December. 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 We're accepting bids right now. Right. So the month of October or, or January. Yeah. That's oh, something. Yeah, this before. Before. Yes, this will be next list, right? Correct. Right. Good. Yeah. Chair, council. Yeah. Council. Uh, and then, uh, what happens if uh, the the when they go out to bid? What it, what happens if there's no bid on on the uh, property? Parcel. I'm thinking of the, yeah. the op, op, not the one that is being discussed, but the one next to it. What's the process look like like that if, they, if there's no bids? We just then we'll it. just continue to own it. But what we'll do is once once it's split out, we'll send the owner in the front a letter saying that there's a parcel available. Okay. Um, and if he doesn't want to buy it or she doesn't want to buy it, then it'll just be under our version. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance 99 carries 5-0. Ordinance 100, ordinance amending the code of the city of Tritea, chapter 145, domestic partnerships. Council President Mantello, Council Member Bissimber, Council Member Paratour. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion, Council Member Gully. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Cummings. Um, I want to thank Mara for bringing this to our attention, and uh, um, this will allow folks to register in your office, domestic partnerships. Uh, I think it's long overdue. The state has done it for several years, recognized it, um, and you're looking at a very minimal fiscal impact, like 20, 30 bucks, correct? Yes, yeah, so the, the uh, original certificate will be $30 a piece, so okay. a small revenue, but not much. Right. Okay, cool. Council President? Yes, Council Member. Yeah, I'd also like to thank our city clerk for bringing this to our attention. I know I met a couple who were looking at this in particular, so it's the more we can do to be inclusive in uh, in, in our city, I think that's great. I did have a question, uh, Mara, with regards to the fee. Uh, in the memo, uh, it's referenced uh, Albany charges 35 and we're charging 30. Uh, where, where did that number come from? Um, is it comparable to what we do for marriage certificates? <laughs> Uh, so we um, charge, um, as do other people in the state, $40 marriage licenses. Um, this will prove to just be less labor for us because we don't, it's only an internal registry. We don't have to work with the Department of Health, um, which is a very time consuming process, um, very labor intensive. And so uh, since there's less work involved for us, we felt that $30 seemed to be a reasonable fee to charge for this. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Mara. Any can, um, can I just say one thing? I just Absolutely. want to mention uh, the deputy clerk, Rachel Carter, did a tremendous amount of the research on this, really looking throughout the state at what different cities and municipalities are doing. So she really deserves a lot of the credit for the background work on this. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, Thank you. we'll, we'll let her know. We'll, yes. And we will also thank her. Um, and I was looking at the municipalities, and I think we took the city of Albany as one of the templates, which is great. Yeah, um, council member Paratour is now with us, so now we have um, six council members, and thank you, council member Paratour. So, council member Paratour, we are on the one that you are co-sponsoring, domestic partnership. So, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance 100 carries 6-0. Ordinance 101, ordinance approving settlement of tax tertiary proceedings instituted by Ampersand Mount Ida Hydro LLC on the assessment roll in the city of Troy. Council member Cummings at the request of the administration. Do I have a motion? motion. So moved. Motion. Council member Paratore, do I have a second? Second. Second. Council member Gali. Um, Dan, do you mind? coming up talking about, um, you know, I get the whole trail portion and that part of it is so non-controversial um, and um, and it's obviously a great connection, but I'd like to talk about the certiorari itself. Yes, yes. this is a certiorari proceeding. Yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. Why don't you go yeah. in depth and then... What we have is, this is a company, uh, Ampersand is a Massachusetts-based corporation that owns a number of hydroelectric facilities throughout the Northeast. Uh, they purchased uh, the Post-to-Kill Creek properties in uh, 2011, I believe it was, 
um, the offer two point five million. At that time, there was a purchase power agreement on the property, which meant that they had a set rate that they set the uh, sold their electricity for. Uh, the reval came along in twenty thirteen, and we had a state advisory appraisal that set the value at uh, two point three million, which was the value that was put on for the reval. Uh, since that time, the power purchase agreement expired. So. Basically, they were selling their electricity at a rate of, uh, I think it was 0.04 kilowatt, and now it's down to, um, it's, a, oh, I'm sorry, it was about six cents a kilowatt hour, now it's down to less than a pound, um, I'm sorry, four cents, I guess. Uh, regardless, I mean, the, the loss of that agreement affects the income that the property produces, and therefore it affects the value. They came in, they grieved in 2018, and they grieved in 2019. Uh, in 2018, um, the board denied the grievance in 2019, knowing what we knew at that point, we had the income and expense statements. The board reduced the assessment down to uh, the current assessments in aggregate of one million four fifty. Uh, as a result of this, um, we went to court. Judge Elliott has it. We have their appraisal report, which supports a value of about one point two million. Under the terms of the settlement, what would happen is they would discontinue one, uh, 2018, which is our year of largest uh, refund exposure. 2019, the assessment would be reduced from the current rate of one, I'm sorry, the current value of 1,450 to 1.1 1 .1 million. When we worked up the financials on this, we were coming in at a value between about a million dollars and 1.2, 1.3 on the heavy side. So 1.1 was about in the middle. Um, ampersand is going to convey the uh, three, acre, three acres of that parcel to the city for the use of the trails. Uh, that was worked out kind of collaterally separate from and prior to me negotiating on, on the value. So that was pretty much a done deal by the time I was negotiating. Yeah, I was hoping it wasn't a no, quick pro quo. No, it was no quick okay. pro quo. Yeah, I was actually, I was unaware that this was going on until Councilman Cummings came to me. Uh, I was, I think at that point, we were at the end of 2018, the beginning of 2019. So the, the land never entered into the negotiation until the end where okay. uh, Councilman Cummings approached me. Uh, said that this was happening, it was beneficial towards the city. Uh, it's something I think Ampersand wants to do, because it's just excess property for them, excess liability, excess expenses. Um, the only sticking point, I mean, to me that was a you know, win-win for everyone involved. The sticking point for Sharon and me was the last term, which was they are looking for a five-year deal. What we're going to do is we'll, uh, Ampersand retains 0.4 acres of the property of the main parcel, and that's the one with the powerhouse on it. It's about a nine foot diameter uh, concrete structure with the two uh, turbines in it. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to, uh, we agreed upon a value of about $660,500, which Sharon worked out with land schedules and what we had. Uh, we were willing to do, uh, well, under the statute, we get a three-year freeze. They wanted a five-year. We were holding out for four. At the end of the day, we said, all right, we'll make it a five-year subject to the terms of the statute, which means that if there's a change in the property, if there's a change in use, if there's a uh, change in the income greater than 25%, if there's a reval, we can change the assessment. So if they get a new PPA. Council member. Okay, thank you. Please. Sorry, yes. Just to, so if they get a new PPA, that would could trigger it? It depends. It depends how much income they would realize from that. You yeah. have to run the numbers. Thank you. That's 25%. How is that monitored? Was do, they, or do they have reporting requirements back to us during that period? Uh, we can make them file income and expense statements. Great. Thank you. Yep. So that's the long and the short of it. Uh, I had a conference earlier this month with Judge Elliott at that point. Uh, we really were on disagreement on the three, four, five-year term deal. I told him no deal. told him, you know, I would see what I could do with the council. But uh, he's going back to his client. I think he'll get approval for this. So... Um, yeah, you know, again, you know, five years, we don't like to bind the city longer than three, usually, uh, because of what's involved in this. You know, we're, we're going to recommend this because we know that we can change that assessment if there is a change to the property and the circumstances I mentioned. And that'll be in the final terms, yes. correct? Oh, yes. Terminology. Oh, yes. Very good. Oh, yes. yeah. I know, I know you're well, talking. No, I, I, I draft know. the documents and I get insistent that uh, in terms of statute. If you could put the reporting requirements, yeah, I think Council well. Member Cummings, that's a good idea. And yeah, it, now the property that um, uh, Ampersand, I wanted to make sure I pronounce them correctly. The property that they're uh, conveying to the city is that part of this agreement or no? 
Yes, um, if uh, there's an attachment um, with your materials, that is the uh, map that I believe Mr. Uh, Johansson uh, drafted. But yes, that that property is the larger parcel, the one that's going from, I believe it's, uh, bear with me. That parcel is going from, uh, it's about 1,160 right now, the large parcel. When the uh, rest of, when the three acres is conveyed, the remainder will be valued at 660,000. And again, Sharon and I reviewed land schedules. We looked at the improvements that are on it, which include the powerhouse, and I believe there's another structure on too. Yeah. So we've got both the land and the improvements account. Has for. anyone from our shop engineering or our engineer at least looked at the three acres to ensure that there's no environmental concerns, any of that? Council Cummings. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I know nothing about it other than what was uh, forwarded to me. Council President? I mean, it's a it's a great swap. Yeah. I just want to make yeah. sure that we're not getting Clean. environmentally contaminated yeah, right. property. Well, and yeah, between now and uh, the council meeting, uh, perhaps we can have someone go up there and take a look. If, uh, yeah. Council Member Kennedy. Uh, Councilor, can you explain to us how the easements and uh, the buffers uh, apply? Yeah, I, there'll be a deed that will be drafted that will convey in, in fee simple the. Uh, property related to the trails and such, the easements would be retained by, um, uh, I'm saying national grid, by ampersand. Uh, so you see on that map, there's a uh, couple yeah. of easements that are, I believe the sluice way, uh, and there's an access easement as well, and there's a power line easement that's being retained by ampersand. So that would all be in the deed as far as ampersand will retain those easements, where they'd be granted the, granted the easement. Council President. Council Member. Two things. And my understanding is with such easements, it's uh, their responsibility to maintain access. Yes. We wouldn't have a new new plowing to do or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then with regard to the buffers, um, that those uh, red line buffers on there, um, those were based on the discussions with Ampersand directly in terms of what uh, they needed for access to run their operations. And they were part of how the the area that needed to be retained by them uh, was calculated, but they're not relevant to the actual property lines. Dan, I, I just want to make sure that Corporation Council's office was a part of the negotiating. And I, I, this is great. Yeah. I, don't get me wrong. Three acres. I, I, I love it. I remember Chris O'Connell a long time ago clearing uh, the Burden Pond area. It was totally just overgrown, horrible. This is a great connection. However, I want to make sure, I mean, our job is to fiduciary, make sure that there's no liability, et cetera. And I know Council Member Cummings has done a wonderful job negotiating this, but his corporation counsel's office been involved. And I just want to make sure, obviously, um, that you guys are signing off on this. Yeah. Uh, up to this point, we have not been involved in the uh, crossing the T's and dying the I's. Uh, Ampersand would be drafting the deed. Um, at that point, I guess I would be working with whoever their attorneys are as far as drafting the deed goes. So basically, it would be our authorization to authorize you right. to negotiate. Right, correct. Can you come back to the council to at least inform us? I mean, I believe me, I, I know that you're ruthless in these. So I, I know that That's you kind. will do a great job. Yeah, okay. I do, I do. That's kind. But you know, honestly, I wouldn't feel comfortable negotiating yeah. three acres and you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so saying yeah. that, do yeah. you, do you recommend waiting on the three acres approving this tertiary? I just want to make sure that we're good doing this moving forward. Yeah, I here's the thing, if you play this out, let's say something goes south with the conveyance. And basically, the whole settlement falls apart. Which, again, I have no problem with going into court and cross-examining their expert. I, you know, um, so I think there's you know little limited downside other than the refund exposure, the tax hurt. Uh, you know, obviously, we would look over uh, any land issues, legal issues, mm -hmm. etc. And as far, but yeah, but it's no problem coming back to you at a later. Uh, well, <coughs> should we reward it? Um, authorize you to negotiate the settlement. I mean, this uh, approves yeah, the settlement. Yeah. Did, yeah. Would you feel more comfortable? I'm asking you, Dan, I'm not an intermediate. 
I'm sorry. I'm just I just, I, I want your direction on this. I just yeah. want to make sure that we're doing the right thing, authorizing you maybe to negotiate a settlement. I mean, this approves the settlement. So yeah. essentially would sign off the three acres. Yeah. I, I mean, the ordinance states that we will execute the necessary stipulations for the settlement. I would imagine that the deed and any other closing document would be part of that. And okay. set section two. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, council member. Go can ahead. we just put some? Can we put a stipulation in the settlement that you know the land has to be addressed and be clean at time of of conveyance, or so there is no there is no yeah, you know, gray yeah, area. Yeah, 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 protect ourselves yeah, in case of something yeah, there. Yeah, we have a recourse yeah. instead of just waiting and trying. That's to a good us. idea. Yes. That's a great idea. Some yeah. wording basically that no liability <laughs> on the city. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll be cool. Okay. And if you could just follow up with yep. us. Cool. All right. Okay. Excellent. And, um, you know, once again, I mean, the three acres, we're super excited about that part. We just want to make sure that uh, all is kosher. Thank you, Dan. Further discussion? Uh, well, yes. Council yep. President, I'm going to ask that Adash Cummings uh, recuse himself from voting on this as he was involved in the negotiation. If later on there's a question, there's a conflict of interest, I respectfully ask that he recuse himself from voting. And you know what? He's the sponsor, so uh, there will have to be another sponsor. I would yeah. have no whoever, problem if you uh, yeah. amend it on the floor. Yeah, sure. we can do that. I'll sign on as a Council Member Kennedy will now sponsor. Let's take, um, a, honestly, I don't think we need to vote on change in sponsorship. So, Council Member Kennedy is the sponsor. If you could just. Uh, make note on our agenda. So once again, Council Member Kennedy at the request of the administration, I agree, I think it's a good idea. Sure. And uh, good. further discussion? Council President, Council Member. Uh, I'll just say uh, this This sounds like an exciting project and uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing more trails in our city and uh, very excited to vote in favor of this. Further discussion. Um, I do want to speak on the Cerciari part. Um, just very quickly, I, I was a little concerned, Dan, initially um, on the Cerciari part only because when a business, obviously, um, their business, um, they're in it for the competition. And, you know, if business takes a turn for the worst, um, that's their risk. And obviously, the Cerciari, it shouldn't be. Um, based on the business, but based on the property. Yeah, I correct? can tell you, I've been litigating a number of hydroelectrics in New York State throughout the last You're two taking years. a beating. Well, yeah. there's that, but the thing is, it's just volatile. It's, yeah. uh, in fact, the, the problem with the courts is in valuing it, and the courts have not come up with a, a method that's acceptable to all, so you really run the risk. Uh, in fact, there's, if you want to get really esoteric, it's called the Monte Carlo method, yeah. which kind of tells you how they're valuing it. It's yeah. really it's a lot of probability, and uh, uh, speculation. So, yeah, I mean, it, that is tied into it. It is volatile. It's a small, it's not even a peaking plant. It's a small producer. Yep. So, therefore, you know, if they don't have that power purchase agreement in place, you right. know, there's not a lot to it. That's why it sold for $2.5 million in 2011. That two point five is a mobile property. It's significant portion has intangibles, the contract, stuff like that. I so think you did a good job with this. It's a okay. tough one. Yeah. No, it, it really yeah. is. Hydro is is a tough business. They're independent and they're getting hot. Council right. member. Actually, Mr. Vincent, yeah. is there a way, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, in the future, if, if there is some kind of financial benefit within the five-year time frame for uh, Ampersam to, I guess, try to reconvey the land back to themselves, is there a way, is that possible? Like if, I don't think so because they're conveying it to us in fee. So we would own the property. The right. city of Troy would own that parcel and they would retain the easements for the sluice gate and the access and all that. Mm -hmm. So, so they can't be re separate, the yeah. assessment and the security. They would not be able to reconvey it to themselves. Oh, what, which I'm sorry, uh, Councilman Kent. So your the certiorari except like the five year right. within, involved in the certiorari. Right. Is that involved with conveyance or are they separate? Well, they're all tied in together. Um, but I think once it's conveyed, it's conveyed. I mean, it's okay. you know, play that okay. out. So know. we can we can reassess, but they can't reconvey. Well, I, I never say never. I, you never know what's going to happen. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you know, there could be an action four years from now. I, I don't know. I, I mean, let's put it this way: we would own the property in fee, so it would be our property 
I, I don't see how they can do it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can play that one out. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Dan, um, good job. I, you, I really wasn't sure about this one, but um, it's it's a tough one. So yeah. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. So five. Uh, ordinance 101, five, zero, one abstain. Ordinance 102, ordinance authorizing settlement of claim to wit Cynthia Smith, plaintiff versus the city of Torrey defendant, Council President Mantello at the request of the administration. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion, Council Member Kennedy. Do you have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Paratore. I would like uh, Jim Caruso, whoever. Um, I guess my big question on this, Jim, I read the memo, and God bless you. Um, the big thing, I know she fell on Broadway, but it doesn't say how. And I just want to make sure that it doesn't set a precedence for future people that fall on Broadway. So you probably know that detail and maybe, right. okay. Uh, this woman tripped, it was a raised lip. There are the sidewalk and they're like blocks, if you will. There was a raised lip, she tripped and fell. Um, our argument at first was that we had no liability because we didn't have prior to written notice of the defect. Uh, we said that Ms. Smith was at fault. She, apparently, she works across the street for RPI. She was carrying packages. She couldn't see her feet. She tripped and she fell. We thought with smooth sailing, we were going to win this one. And then they were able to establish that there was a little old lady a couple of years before who had fallen like in the same spot. Well, not the same spot, but close enough that when Dan, uh, uh, not Dan, excuse me, when Rick Morrissey made the motion for summary judgment, as she said in here, he's not completely confident it's going to be granted because the court could say, okay, she didn't identify the little old lady in the prior fall, didn't identify that exact spot. But it's kind of like in baseball, you know, the neighborhood rule, right? Second base, kind of like the neighborhood rule. And what we felt was that the, we were not confident the judge was going to be sympathetic to the city of Troy, would deny our motion for summary judgment. At that point in time, uh, Ms. Smith's demand for settlement was going to go up. I think it's important to note that the $18,000, in my opinion, actually is a very good settlement. Um, this lady's not going to really see any of this because she has she has a significant workers' compensation claim uh, working uh, lien on her recovery. So I think all things being equal, this is a real good settlement. And that was Rick Morrissey okay. handled this. All right. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Council Member Cummings? Is there... Uh, similar liability or possible liability for the post office itself? That's an excellent question. I also asked Rick that we would have had a commence in action and you can't you can't third party in the post office. We would have had to go to federal court. It would it, it would have been in, in, in uh, Rick's opinion it would have gotten uh, unnecessarily complex. Um, we we made what we believe to have been the best deal here. Um, and under the circumstances, I would recommend that the city council approve it. Council awesome. President, Council Thank Member you. Parator. Um, Mr. Cruz, I don't know that if you're the right person to answer this, but has it been fixed? To the best of my knowledge, it has. <laughs> yes. So I, it's right a question. great question. I think <laughs> what I've seen, um, this is not sworn, so I'm not going to swear it. I think what I've seen was they, they basically, they kind of put a patch. You know where the lip is? They put a patch that was like a ramp. Because I go to that post office, or I used to go to that post office all the time. So that's the way the post office is rectified. Thank you. Thank Chair. you. Very good question. Council Member Gully. I'm ready. Council Councilor, President. isn't it, isn't it uh, a fact that the owners of the properties have the liability for the sidewalks? That is true. No matter who they are? That is so true. after we, if this is approved, we have the ability to file a claim. I mean, at the least, we can file a claim to the post office, to their insurance carrier. For that claim, since they have a liability to the to the sidewalk as a property owner, I really don't know the answer to that question. We could try. I don't know we'll whether or not. I, I do know that code of the city of Troy, where it's binding in a state court action, is not necessarily binding in federal court. 
So I don't know whether that claim will have will get any traction. It's a great idea. I'll bring it to Rick's attention. I would see no reason why we wouldn't file it. We, we could certainly look into it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, further discussion? Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 102 carries, 6 0. We're going to move along to resolutions. Resolution 74, authorizing the execution of an agreement, memorandum of understanding with the Town of Brunswick regarding the Brunswick Meadows condo community project. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? So moved. Motion, Council Member Perator, do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Gully, discussion. Council President? Yes, Council Member Kennedy. I'm going to request someone from the administration explain uh, yep. what we're, what this is. Perfect. Uh, Jim, is I that you? Sure, okay. sure. Thank you. Um, quite a while that Mayor and I were called over to me at the county office building. We met with representatives from the town of Brunswick, representatives from the county of Rensselaer, and also Mr. Murley, who was trying to develop this property. It was brought to our attention that there was a mistake in the tax map and uh, what I've learned learned a lot on this job learned that our tax maps do not necessarily coincide with that of the town of Brunswick which is immediately put in the city of Troy so what Jolene White right is that a say your name she, she's wonderful she was really nice what she said is essentially what we have is is a his and historical tax map error showing a parcel of property as being in the city of in the town of Brunswick. So at first we thought we were talking about a land swap. They give us a parcel, we give them that parcel. Then it turns out, Jolene said, no, we don't need that at all. What we need to do is we need to have the corresponding municipalities, the city of Troy and the town of Brunswick, agreeing that we should correct the, 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 the border, the tax map num uh, the line between the two municipalities it not only requires that each municipality vote on it, but that they also enter into, and this was the county insisted on this, the agreement slash memorandum of understanding, understanding that's attached as exhibit B. So where where what it is is it's just correcting an error in the tax map itself. Okay. And uh, Jim, I um pretty familiar with the development. Do they plan to use this for anything? Um, is it hindering development now? Are they planning more condos? Only because I do know it abuts Hialeah. So. This would be speculation on my part, but I think uh, an educated speculation in that Mr. Murley was concerned with continuing to develop the condominium project, knowing that there is a potential issue there and like any developer who's smart, they're going to try to avoid that. So, so he said, "Let can you guys figure this all out so I can go ahead?" And, and that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, all right. So, Council Member Kennedy. Council President. So it looks like yeah. the the border it follows Delator Drive or Delator Road. That's just. No, so is that a question? Because I don't see Delator Road. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't. Where I, I just where is the border here? Where exactly is it? Um, Are we moving the border, or we're just changing a number? On we're the just map? changing a number. Oh, okay. Well, see, the thing is, is that even if we agree, hey, county, change the tax map line, they can't do that. It has to be officially done by both municipalities. Okay, so there's no land swap, no nothing. This is purely a tax map this is number. A, this is basically a ministerial correction of an error. All right, good. Yep. yep, thank you, Jim. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Reso 74, 6 0. Reso 75, resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Catalog and Commerce Solutions LLC for personnel uh, hyphen civil service uh, software system. Council President Mantello at the request of the administration. Do I have a motion? Oh. So moved. Motion, <laughs> Council Member Perator. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Member Gully. And 
Uh, Andy, I don't know if you want to just fill us in real quick. I know you went out for RFP. Um, how many uh, came in and why do you recommend this and what are they doing? So this is actually piggybacked up Cayuga County. Yep. Uh, it is civil it's software essentially right now, the personnel office man, uh, maintains all roster cards, uh, sign ups for the civil service exams. Everything's maintained in Excel. What this is, is this is a computer system that will allow for ex the, all the Excel things to go within here. So it'll allow for all of employee roster cards to go into the system. If you sign up for a test, it will be within the system. Everything will be maintained. So it'll allow for easier ability to track records within the office. It, it, it will also make it easier for report generation and things like that. Mm -hmm. And Andy, the 29K, I know it's annual. Uh, how many years are we locked in? Do you know? So if you look at page. I'm scrolling. Top Maybe page seven bottom. of the contract. So okay. 29,000 is the implementation. Year one is $0. It's part of the payment. It's part of the 29,000. 2021, 22, yep. 23, 24 is all $5,700 a year. Okay. And then additional 125 per hour for uh, additional outside scope of work. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Chair. Council Member Gully. Andy, are there any other expanded applications that this program could be used for? Is it just strictly civil service registration? And My understanding is it's specific for personnel and civil service itself. Nothing. Else. Nothing else. Not to my knowledge, no, I can certainly follow up. And this program, will this, how does this help the people that are doing this now? I know it frees them up, put them in a program, but what does that allow them to do? Like, does that free up time for them to work on other structured projects, or is this just? If I were to guess, yes. It's update, it's, it's too, it's part and parcel with updating the technology we have, right? I mean, to use Excel. For roster cards to me is is a little what? extreme. You know yeah. what I mean? So it, yeah. it makes it easier on the office. So it'll make the office more efficient. Antiquated was the word I was thinking. <laughs> Antiquated was the word I was thinking. I couldn't think of it. So it's okay. I'll send it to you in a text. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, further discussion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Reso 75, carry 60. Resolution 76, authorizing the execution of a memorandum of understanding by and between the City of Torrey and the City of Waterbury. Council President Mantello, at the request of the administration, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion, Council Member Cummings. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Council Go. Member Gully. And um, I, Mayor, very uh, good job on this one. Um, I think. Uh, it's long overdue, the Congress Street area. Um, is Steve around? I know he might be in planning. Okay, maybe, could you have him just available for the uh, council meeting? He can go into this a little deeper? Okay, thank you. Is that all right with yeah, the council? The regular yeah, unless right. anyone here wants to go into it. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, right. come on, what's I, it all about? I can explain as best as I can. Okay. City of Waterfleet was able to get a hundred and seventy thousand dollar grant. Uh, this is the money to uh, the connectivity study for the Congress Street Bridge. Uh, but apparently, the funding source, which I believe is it federal money? Yes, state, state, state money. Uh, they said you got to have a little skin in the game, so they want each of the municipalities, Waterfleet and Troy, to kick in fifteen thousand dollars. And that's the purpose of this this uh, legislation and the uh, agreement between the two cities that we would do this. Basically, it's a feasibility study to see what we're going to do with the Congress Street Bridge, which I think we all agree needs work. Yeah. And Mayor, didn't we though get some federal money for the actual bridge? Um, and the I, I thought that Schumer announced that. Am I? Confusing that with something else. I thought Senator Schumer was that. Well, hopefully you're clairvoyant and you're talking about what's going to happen. <laughs> there you go. I like that. No, no we, don't have, we don't have any okay. federal funds lined okay. up for this. This is really to study the feasibility or the viability 
of uh, reconnecting uh, River Street, right. where the um, well, actually uh, uh, where the new bridge is now, so that we can continue developing, um, expand the downtown. Yep. And it's critical to the redevelopment of the Taylor site to be able to do that. It's not it's not essential, right. but it, it will make a much uh, better uh, layout if we can. This, the elevations need yeah. to be studied, the traffic patterns. Yeah. So this uh, ramp will fund that. This is super cool. I mean, it's long overdue. Um, it, it's just so archaic down there. And obviously, we're not taking advantage of the waterfront <coughs> in that area sure, at all. There's a, there's a um, lot of lost time. It's a gold yeah. mine. Yeah. So thank you. All right. Council President? Yes. Council Member Cummings. Um, I guess my understanding is this was applied for with Waterfleet. Um, to what do they're on their side they're talking about connection down to the park basically or are there other and pedestrian connection maybe from from water uh, i'm the not park? as familiar with their side as i understand that they're looking uh, to be able to connect with their riverfront from there as well too i don't know what that would look like and do you have uh, a sense of and, and um, i don't i'm just sorry. probably for steve um and we'll get into it at the next meeting if that's the case but do you have a sense of sort of the planning time being spent on this how much is being spent on which side, or is it pretty yeah, holistic? Yeah, I, I couldn't say. Okay. Uh, we'll have, I could have Steve here for the uh, council. Great, Thank you. And I think, yeah. you know, whatever they decide on their side, uh, whatever we decide on our side, uh, we would we might pursue same, the same funding, we might pursue different sorts of funding, but the, the work on, on both ends are, are not contingent upon each other, right. necessarily. Good. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Thank you. And, um, Chair. Yes, council member. Mr. Going. Mayor, don't walk away so quick. <laughs> just, a, just a quick question because we, we talk about the water building bridge, we talk about the industrial roadway we're putting in, we talk about 787 being a block, the entrance 787 being a block and a half away from that bridge. Will there be any consideration for any type of industrial route that might get people off 787, trucks off 787, and be able to come up over that bridge and go the, the back way to? Our industrial roadway will that tie into that um, as they come off that bridge at right hand turn? Yeah, I um, I think we're we prefer industrial uh, traffic to come in the through over yes. the finance bridge yes. yeah. and come up the roadway as opposed to putting heavy industrial trucks in a dense. Uh, but we know what happens, district. right? Oh, we, we know, know what happens. We know what happens. Yeah, so I mean, trying to make it easier for it not yeah. to happen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution 76 carries 6 0. I will take a motion to motion. adjourn. And then we'll go right into special if that's okay. Motion, Council Member Gully. Second, Council Member December. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We'll go right into the special just to do this uh, civil service software if it's okay.